All right, let's prove Rice's theorem as quickly as we possibly can. So recall that a property of Turing machine languages P is a set of Turing machine descriptions so that for any two Turing machines with the same language, either both of them are in the property. So another word for property is just the uh, set of Turing machine descriptions. And so it's either that both of them are in the property or neither of them are in the property. It can't be the case that one of them is in and another one is out. And a non-trivial property is one such that there is some machine in the property and some that's not. So it can't be the case that every single Turing machine is in there and uh, or none of them is in there. So how do we actually prove this? So what we need to do is to, uh, and actually what is Rice's theorem? Rice's theorem is that every non-trivial property is undecidable. So how do we actually prove this? So if we wanna show that every non-trivial property is undecidable, well, we need to have a non-trivial property and, and we're gonna let P be an arbitrary one. An arbitrary non-trivial property. So we, we need to have some arbitrary non-trivial property. And let's suppose that P was decidable. And then what we'll show is that this can't be possible. So what we should note here is that we want to derive a contradiction. Derive a contradiction later. Okay, so how would we actually derive a contradiction later? Well, we'll suppose that P is decidable. Well, what we'll try to do is we will build a decider for ATM. And I haven't made a video on this yet, but we're going to assume for now that ATM is really, really is undecidable. So it's not decidable, but on the assumption that P is decidable, we're going to build a decider for ATM. So how are we going to do that? Well, ATM takes input of the form MW, where M is a Turing machine and W is a string. And we have to say yes if M accepts W and no if M does not accept W. So we're going to build a decider, a supposed decider for ATM. Well, I can't just ask if M is uh, within the, the property. Uh, it is decidable, we're supposing, the property. So we could ask if M was within the property or not, but that doesn't tell us anything about whether M accepts W, which is the real question here. So what we're gonna do instead is we're going to construct a Turing machine, and the goal of this one is to have it M, say M accepts W if and only if this machine is in the property or not in the property. You could go either way on this. So what we want to do here is the machine will accept, will have M accept W, this machine, not the one we're building will accept W if and only if the machine we're making has the property. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna call it M prime. And it's gonna take some arbitrary input X right here. So this is just any old string. And what's it gonna do? We're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna simulate M, the original machine, on W. So we should note here that M is the same one as that one over there, and W is the same as the input string way above. It's not the X string that we have here. And if M rejects W, then what we will do is we will reject X. We will say, no, we're not gonna accept input X. So the fact of whether M accepts W is fixed when I make this M prime machine. So no matter what string I feed in, if M really does reject W outright, it'll just reject W every single time. 
But then otherwise, what we're going to do is this. We're going to uh, make note of the fact that P is a non-trivial property. So before we get to that, let's talk about such a machine. Well, let's have a machine called M sub empty have empty language. Well, this machine either is in the property or isn't. And what we'll do is we're going to suppose for the moment that this machine that has empty language is not in the property. And why can I assume that? Well, suppose it is in the property. Well, we assume that the property was decidable and decidable languages are closed under complement. So if it was in the property, in the proof down below, we can swap uh, P and its complement. So uh, if it is in P, then, then swap P with the complement of P, which we're allowed to do because we're assuming that P was decidable. And so we now are given an example of a machine that is not in the property. Well, because it's non-trivial, there must be some machine that's in the property. So let's suppose that T is in the property. So this machine T is just some machine that's in the property. I don't know what it is, but there must be one because P is a non-trivial property. And so we can't we can assume because P is non-trivial. Okay, so what are we gonna do in the M prime machine? We're going to run T, this machine that is in the property, on X and accept if T accepts. And that's what this machine's gonna do. So let's actually understand what this machine's doing. So there are two things that can happen. So either M accepts W or M does not accept W. Well, if M accepts W, well, that means that a, step A, that reject step is not taken, which means that the language of M prime is the same as the language of T because we skip step A because we skip that if statement. So we just run step B, which is just doing what the machine T would have normally done. So the language of M prime is the language T here. But if M does not accept W, either it outright rejects W or runs forever. If it outright rejects W, then this reject step will always be taken, which means that the language of T of M prime is empty. Well, if it runs forever on W, we'll never actually accept anyway. So that means that the language of M prime in this case is empty. So this tells us, well, if the first case happens, this shows us that M prime is in the property. And the second one shows us that M prime is not in the property. So now we've actually transformed the fact of whether M accepts W to a question about whether this machine we just made, M prime, has the property, is in the language P here. So what are we going to do now? Well, since we are assuming that the the property is decidable by supposition, we're going to assume that there's a decider for it for that reason. So let D be a decider for this property P. Because we assume this is, is decidable, there must be a decider for that reason. So then let's run D on that machine M prime that we just made. If D accepts, so it says, yes, it is in the property. Well, if it's in the property, that tells us that M accepts W. Well, the machine we're trying to make is one for ATM. So we determine that M accepts W. So therefore we need to say accept because we just certified that M accepts W. And then otherwise, 
that tells us that the machine does not have the property, which means that we're in this second case right here, which means that M does not accept W, which tells us that the answer for ATM should be reject. And so why is this a decider? Well, constructing the machine, just making the machine, is, is it takes a finite amount of time. We don't need to uh, run anything. We're just making the machine, not doing anything fancy here. Just constructing the machine to, uh, to hard code all of the instructions of M on input W and the machine uh, T here. We're just hard coding everything in. And for step two, well, we're assuming that the property is decidable, so that runs in a finite amount of time, and clearly step three runs in a finite amount of time. So what we have concluded is that since ATM is undecidable, the only reason we were able to make this machine, which runs in a finite amount of time, is supposing that there is a decider D for the property P. So this tells us that P is undecidable because no decider for it can exist. Okay. So that effectively shows and proves Rice's theorem, which says that every non-trivial property is undecidable.